Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm here to speak about uh, personalized and human-centric approach to experience design and the impact it can make. That's a lot of words and a very large title. And so what I'm going to do is try to break everything down for you really simply. What we use are, are three guiding principles to really kind of help create a personalized and human-centric uh, brand experience. Uh, I work at an agency called Freeman XP, which is what we do uh, every day when we create events. And what I'm going to share with you are uh, three ways that we start to look at everything. And the, and the first way is called the story world, which is a way that we create an emotive ecosystem. We always want to create something that connects with people at an emotional level. Then there's the manifesto, and this helps us uh, create a belief system, which I'll speak about. And then the final thing, which you might find beneficial, are the 7XD principles, which is a framework which we use to start to measure a human-centric experience. Uh, so the first one I'm talking about is the story world. So the story world is really interesting. It sounds like a big word, but it's not. It's, it's a place where visitors can create and collect and connect experiences. And it's emotive, and it encourages storytelling. This place is a story world in its, in its own sense, in its own right. And what we want to do is create really memorable experiences to do this. And speaking further on the story world, the story worlds are these living narratives. Uh, these are rich experiential theaters that really kind of create memories for people to personalize and share along the way. This is one in particular that we did for Vodafone. And it allowed uh, uh, young guests to really kind of collect and create and curate their own experiences. This was for a youth brand called Voxy, which you have to be under 29 years old to use. And we created this whole Instagram environment along with a, VJ, uh, with a DJ party and had all sorts of celebs and social influences there. And the whole thing was to really kind of create fun areas that connect on a personal and emotive level. And the story world is what does that. It starts to create this uh, emotive ecosystem. It's really deep. It's very, it's almost theatrical in some regards, and it's very immersive. And that's the kind of experiences you really want to start to create at events. The second thing that I'm going to talk about is something that I got out of the ad world. I worked in advertising for a little bit. And one thing that they always used was a manifesto. But what I believe is that the manifesto is something that we should be using in the events industry, because it's something where it really puts the boots on the ground and gets everybody aligned. So the story world, they all have this logic, and they have a set of rules. And this set of rules maintains the logic. And that's what we, the manifesto is for, and it grounds that. And what's interesting is the manifesto really kind of starts to define the parameters of your event experience. And it looks at all the different artifacts that you might have, the characters, what people become, the story that they share. And it's a, it's a really good way to start to connect and not only align your clients and your customers and your brand, but the people that are attending them as well. And just to understand what a manifesto is, it's, it's something that, that is used all over the world. This was one for uh, Campaign Red which uh, you might have seen the different red iPods and the red telephones and stuff. Here's one right here. And what it is is this was the manifesto that was actually written when they launched this campaign. It was, it was helped to uh, uh, gain money to help AIDS in Africa with just the purchase of different products, different companies that signed up for red. And with that, they created a manifesto. This aligned the client, the different brands, and got everybody excited and connected at a different level. Then some manifestos can be partial manifestos. And this is one by an artist, uh, Bruce Mao, who uh, wrote the Incomplete Manifesto for Change. And it was really interesting because he started to put his thoughts down and really kind of bring it to life. And again, it starts to galvanize a movement. Some manifestos also can be tactile. This was a, a, a hacker, a remixer's manifesto, which was great. And they're, they're, they're really fun. And it's something that you can co-create with your clients, with your teams, to rally behind. And it sets a set of organizing principles around it. And then finally, with manifestos, they also are sometimes shown in popular culture. And they can be outward expressing. And this was from the movie Train Spotting, 
which had a manifesto, which was the opening sequence of dialogue, which you heard when the film started. And again, it's a great way to connect the story and the event that you're creating. And so that's a little bit about the manifesto. So what we do is we, we create a story world, we have a manifesto that grinds it and aligns it along the way. And then the final thing, what I want to talk about, are the 7XD principles. And this is an experience framework, and I believe this is where you, know, you can really kind of look holistically at an event experience and, and uh, start to create something that's, that's, that's bigger than what you thought of before, and at the same time, just ticking boxes to make sure that you're connecting at all the levels. And so what it is is there's, there's seven different points that we begin to look at, and I'm going to go through each one and it's from a macro level down to a micro level. And what the goal is of this is to really establish a strong emotional connection and really kind of connect between the consumer and the brand. And the result of this, it really encourages people to share stories because when you share a story, that's something that's been very personal to yourself. It helps kind of speak of the experience and really kind of uh, cascades everything afterwards. Uh, the seven areas which we're going to talk about are the hero, the design, the message, the narrative, the engagement, the shareability, and the artifact. And each one plays a role in really kind of crafting a human-centric and personalized experience. So the first one that we were looking at we're, when we were, when we were uh, looking at these organizing principles was the idea of the hero. And that's, that's where you bring the product the brand, the event, the experience, and then yourself, yourself being the participant, the visitor, the guest in that experience, all becoming the hero together. Because a lot of times, a lot of people think that an, an event, somebody will say, well, what was it like? What was the design like? And it's not about that. It's about what you felt like, what the people are like, what everything, what the message was, and bringing all of that together. The second thing that we look at, though, is the design. And the design is there not necessarily to, to be something that, that is bigger than the event itself. It's there to really kind of frame the brand, the experience, and you in a memorable world. It really brings that to life on another level. After that, what we begin to look at is uh, the message. And the message is something that should be joined up and it's inspired, and it's a call to action. This was something that we had done uh, in the Ukraine recently for the Champions League final, and this was a brand experience, and it was around Lay's, which was one of the main sponsors there. And this was show your football emotions. And what was great about this is they had a, a call to action and a whole campaign that related all the way through every channel that they had that they were communicating on, whether it was advertising, whether it was radio, whether it was TV, whether it was the packaging of the potato chips themselves, all the way down to the brand experience and how we curated that so people could show their football emotions and we created a, a plethora of, a, of experiential uh, pockets throughout the event and this is the outside of it that, where it all kind of came to life. After that, the fourth thing that we always look at is the narrative. And the narrative is very important. The narrative is that, that moment that starts to uh, connect the journey, and it really kind of creates the story. And so this is an example of a trend lab. This is something that we've created before, which we host and facilitate with client, clients. And the narrative of that is this whole laboratory of exploration and experimentation. And with that, we have different trends, which are trend cubes and we track those and they're different assets that people can, can pick up along the way and look at and the whole kind of expression of this journey is this laboratory feel and it really kind of helps people understand the whole uh, experiential design of this area. After the narrative, the next thing that we look at is the engagement. And what's interesting with the engagement, and in this day and age a lot of times we feel that we have the need to create lots of deep uh, digital engagement, which is great, but it's also, we have to remember we can take a step back and we can really have analog engagement as well. It doesn't have to be something that's very expensive. It can be something as simple as creating 
a, a call to action and people come and write on the wall themselves. This was for uh, a, a launch that we did for Leading Age, which, um, which was for uh, retirement. And we encouraged young people and everybody around in the city to write down their dreams and what they would be when they would grow up. And it was a very, very, very simple way of engagement on a, on a, on a macro level. And it was interactive and immersive without being digital. And you don't have to spend a lot of money to do things like this. But all of these start to add up to create a very unique experience. After that, what you want to do is to be able to create something that's shareable. The shareability aspect is key, and we know that now with all of the Instagram moments that we're creating and all the tweets that are going on today and everything. And this was something that we did for uh, Vodafone, and it was at the Summertime Ball in London, which was a one-day uh, pop festival where they had 20 of the biggest bands in the world. And we had to communicate to a demographic, an audience, uh, which was primarily 80% were teenage girls. And we created this whole uh, way to communicate with them, which a lot of it was creating new different emojis that represented the event itself, because we understood that was the way they liked to communicate. And with that, we created an emoji garden, which they were Instagramming and, and hashtagging along the way and allowed them to collect different things to win a chance to get backstage passes and different VIP experiences. And then the final thing, which I want to talk about, is the artifact, which is my favorite. And the artifact is a, a really relative and emotive giveaway. And it's something that is the DNA of the brand itself. A lot of times, we give away sweets, we give away pins, we give away bags. And those are great if you sell sweets or pins or bags. But it makes more of an impact if you can create a DNA or something that really represents the core expression of the event, of the experience itself. Now this in particular is one of my favorite tickets. And this is a ticket. And this was to the uh, number four brand attraction in the world, the Guinness Storehouse in Dublin, Ireland. And what was interesting about this is when you'd be in line to get your tickets, they would hand you this pebble, they called it, and it could fit in the side, in the, inside your hand. It was, it was this acrylic clear thing, and inside it was a drop of Guinness beer. And what was interesting about that is that was what the brand was about. And you went through this whole experience, and you learned about how they crafted everything, you learned about the history, and you walked all the way up to the top. And once you got there, you showed them your pebble, and you would get a sample. Or if you're a kid, you would get a, a treat, like a Coke or something like that. And what was really interesting about this, since they didn't use a ticket and they used this device, it connected you emotively in a different level. And the artifact uh, was something that you would put in your pocket. And then you would end up going to work next week, and you'd forget that you might have this still in your jacket pocket. And you pull it out, and you put it on the desk, and somebody would always walk by and they might pick it up and they would say, what's this? And this artifact allowed you to communicate the whole experience at a personal level. It told you how, you, t you, you talked about your journey, how it was, all the different touch points along the way. And it was because this, this, this artifact had so much relevance, it really brings it to life in another way. And so that's something where like a pen or a bag or a bowl of sweets won't do. And so when we're creating event experiences, to really get that personalized touch, you really have to think, what is it that I'm saying? What is the message that I'm getting? And what's the best way to really kind of create a memory around that? And that's what they did here successfully at Guinness. What we do is we look at all of these, and we, we have our own field guide uh, that really kind of brings all seven together. And we always use this to check against any project uh, that we do. And so what it allows us to do is to kind of create this whole uh, uh, kind of one pager, which starts with the story world, and then the hero, the design, the message. And then we go down to the narrative, the engagement, the shareability, and the artifact itself. And it's really good because it helps us 
make sure that we're having this human-centric approach, that we're really looking at everything step by step and we're not missing anything along the way. And every project we do, we use this as a brand filter to bring that to life and to make sure that we're really hitting everything properly to create that experience. And so in the end, what I'm saying is, is that these are the three guiding principles that we use, the story world, the manifesto, and the 7XD principles. That's something we're very passionate about and we really want to share that with everybody because we think that everybody could benefit from this and utilize it as well in their own event experiences. And it's a great way to create personalized and a human-centric approach to experience design and really create that impact that you want. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.